Hey guys, and welcome to another Game Explained discussion. I'm your host, Derek Bittner, and I'm joined today by Ash Paulson, live from his hotel at PAX Prime, to discuss the latest Nintendo Direct, which happened to be Japan only, despite being one of the best Directs we've had in a while. Shulk was revealed, Xenoblade 3DS was revealed, Bravely Second and Final Fantasy Explorers got some trailers, there were some other Japan exclusive games that looks interesting, plus a brand new 3DS that is labeled the new 3DS, both in XL and normal size qual- uh, uh, sizes. And it was just mind-blowing how much was there. But what was your impressions, Ash? Yeah, same here. I mean, I, I think a lot of us weren't really expecting a whole lot from Direct because it's Japan only. And usually when that happens, we just get kind of like some, some quick looks at weird, you know, niche Japan only games. And uh, then Sakurai retweeted the uh, Direct announcement. And that's when we knew, like, okay, some, some, something's going down. We got to be up at 4 a.m. for this stupid Direct. <laughs> but uh, it, it ended up being worth it. it it's, it's one of the best Directs we've ever seen. Yeah, it really was. I, you know, had to wake up early. I for you know, decided like, okay, I'm just going to go to bed early for this direct, even before knowing that just so I could get make sure to cover it because I don't know, there was something weird about there's just something weird about how it was announced and just the fact it was 3DS focused. It's it it felt like there was something going on. So I just you know, we decided that it was better for me to go to bed early so I could stay up get up awake for this. And you were just crazy enough. Well, Sakurai's retweeted it, so of course I got to stay up for this. Exactly. <laughs> but let's go over that since you're going to be going to bed after this. We're going to have a proper, full-on Shulk discussion. So let's just get quick impressions of Shulk being in Smash Brothers for you. You know, honestly, even though the leak kind of you know told us that he was definitely in already, it didn't really diminish the hype from the trailer at all. I mean, he looks really cool. The, the trailer's really well done, as always. I mean, there's something about an official reveal and and uh, you know getting an official look at how the character plays that that all the leaks in the world can't, uh, you know, diminish the hype for. And it, it was it's a great trailer. I really, uh, I, I love the different Minato forms he has. It looks like he has five different forms that he can use to augment his uh, various stats during battle. And uh, his his final smash pays a lot of fan service to Xenoblade fans. It's got uh, Dunban in it and uh, Riki. Is it Riki? I think it's Riki, yeah. Yeah, it's got Dunban and Riki in it and... Uh, that uh, Gower Plains music remix is awesome, uh, and the stage looks great too. So it's Shulk looks great. I'm uh, you know I, I'm a little bitter only because it's not the chorus kids that I wanted. I'm still on the <laughs> I'm still worried that they're they're you know actually not actually in, but still Shulk is really cool. No, he really is. You know me, I was completely down on this on the on the leak. I didn't you know wasn't sure about it mostly because I didn't want to be spoiled by it. But now that we've had a new character reveal and one we knew about. I mean, I will say I wasn't quite as excited as I would have been for if it had been like completely out of the blue, but it still we still kind of got a sense of it because of the Gamatsu leaks and all that. So it still wouldn't have mattered either way. But despite all that, this is a great reveal trailer. I loved you know seeing Bowser get struck from behind, being treated like one of the monsters that Shulk deals with. That was really cool. Seeing him demonstrate the ability to use his t- uh, time. Uh, manipulation or seeing the future to dodge Link's and Marth's attacks. This was just a really cool trailer. And I love how his buffs also debuff something else. It makes it yeah. very unique and interesting. It does, definitely. I mean, there's never really been a character like this in Smash before. And uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing, you know, like how he feels like playing the game myself. And, uh, you know, one thing I did notice is it looks like his down special is a counter, which, I mean, it, it, that's great. But so many characters now, especially sword users, have counters. So it's getting a little a little repetitive to see so many characters have counters as their down special. Uh, at least the sound effect that comes with it for for Shulk is really cool. It's got it's, it's got a, kind of a really chunky, clinging sound effect to it that really kind of brings out the Monado in my opinion. Yeah, I mean it kind of makes sense for the Monado to have a counter just because that's how that's best, pretty much the best way you can implement the whole seeing the future mechanic. Yeah, and that's really the only way you could do it. But I do agree that the counter has been a bit overused. Because uh, you know, a, you know, Little Mac has it, Marth have it, has it. Of course, Lucina has it since she's a bit of a clone. Um, you know, there's just a lot of characters that have used it. And it's not quite as special as it once was. That said, it's still, of course, incredibly useful. Now, of course, we got a little tease at the end of that trailer uh, with Metal Face's voice showing up, and so I think this is our next confirmed boss on yeah. a stage. I think it makes yeah. sense to have Metal Face show up and do some attacks. So that's that's pretty cool to have him there. 
Yeah, I mean, it makes sense for him to show up on the Gower Plains. I mean, Metal Face showing up is really cool. I, I've always found him to be a very interesting character. Even though I haven't played through all of Xenoblade, I did you know, got, get introduced to Metal Face, and he is just imposing in that game. So I like yeah. the fact that he shows up uh, and you know does something. And I, I, I kind of love the fact that they got the original cast back, and they got all the English... the british voice acting in there and i think it sounds great yeah no so it, it is the the entire original cast right because shulk himself actually sounded a little different to me did he i didn't get to listen to it properly but i heard metal face's voice which sounded so similar so i just assumed shulk was the same yeah no no metal face sounds exactly the same uh and shulk i'm sure is he just sounded a little different to me but you know it could just be time has passed for the you know actor in real life who knows but i'm sure it's the same guy yeah pretty much so, yeah, I mean, we're both excited for Shulk, and like I said, we'll get into that a bit more in depth and talk about, you know, other thoughts on it uh, but a little bit later today, but uh, we just wanted to cover the Direct itself first. But, still speaking of Xenoblade, we have Xenoblade Chronicles 3DS, which looks amazing. I think this is probably, this might be the best way to play that game just because it is so long, so being able to take it with you wherever, get in just a little bit, not, you know... On, on, on the go, I think it's a perfect fit for Xenoblade. Yeah, me, me too. And, uh, you know, we don't know if this is going to have any additional features. It really kind of came out of nowhere. But, uh, you know, it's good to see the game getting some love. I, I haven't finished it on the Wii. Uh, it's, it's, it's proven to be a very difficult game for me to get through mm-hmm. for various reasons. But maybe this will be, you know, I'd love to see the, uh, the game's beautiful, beautiful environments in 3D. So maybe this will be the push to kind of, you know, pick it back. Uh, I need to pick it back up again and kind of see it all the way through. Because I'm, I'm afraid now I'm playing Smash, I'm going to get all sorts of Xenoblade spoilers. Mm-hmm. Uh, much like, you know, Mother 3 players got a lot of Lucas spoilers in Brawl. So I don't, I, I don't want to see that happen with Xenoblade. So I might have to go and uh, finally play this now. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a, it's a nice, great cross-promotion. you got Shulk and Smash, you got Xenoblade Chronicles, and now you have Xenoblade Chronicles X that you'll get people hyped for because of their experience, Shulk and Xenoblade Chronicles. So it, it's really intelligent and shows how well smash brothers can be used to promote other games yeah it's it's really true and kind of, I, I, I hate to keep going back to this but this just makes me hope that uh, we're going to get a, a new rhythm heaven game on 3ds when the course kids are inevitably announced <laughs> one would hope because they are popular i'm holding on to hope yeah no they are incredibly popular so i i have it doesn't won't surprise me at all if we get another rhythm heaven game here soon now the next i mean we along with after Shulk, we got a few games announced, uh, not announced, but it also just shown off a bit. And, you know, Monster Hunter, a One Piece game, nothing too exciting. But we also got some new trailers for Bravely Second and Final Fantasy Explorers. And these are, we, we haven't really talked about this, these games coming out yet just because yeah, they're so busy covering everything else. So it's hard to address these properly. Bravely Second, I am looking forward to Majorly. Bravely Your Default is an amazing game, and I need I need to finish it just like I need to finish Channel Blade Chronicles. <laughs> uh, I'm noticing that's a trend now that I think about it. <laughs> yeah, really. But you have reviewed it for us, and I know how much you love that game. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it uh, definitely has some pacing issues later on in the game, but, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to checking out Bravely Second. Uh, it, uh, we know that the trailer definitely features Agnes from the first game, and I think Square actually already revealed that she was going to play a pretty major role in the second game story. I think it revolves around her kidnapping, actually. So we know that Agnes comes back, and, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing more. I'm sure it's going to have more of the same amazing music. Mm-hmm. And considering how well Bravely Default did here, I, I don't think we'll have to wait too long to see Bravely Second here. I'm, I'm thinking we'll get it early next year. Yeah, that's my thought, because it's coming out in Japan in uh, winter, and, you know, I, I expect, like, at the latest May for us to get it. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking too. And it's just it's just sort of perfect. I mean, it's it's it, the funny thing is, is that this trailer itself is really understated. There's not a whole lot going on, but you get a sense of the world again. And it just puts you right back in the mood and I just get incredibly excited for it. But moving on from that, we also, as I said, got Final Fantasy Explorers, which I haven't been able to get a proper rate on because mostly it just seems like a combination of Final Fantasy and Monster Hunter, which I guess could be good, but I've never been able to get into the Monster Hunter series, yeah. so I'm not sure if this is a game for me or not. I'm I'm 100% in agreement with you. I've never been able to get into Monster Hunter. I you know I have so little free time for games nowadays. I really value being able to play games that I can actually finish. Mm-hmm. And Monster Hunter is one of those games that just never really ends. I'm not I'm not calling its quality into, into question. Clearly, people love Monster Hunter. It's a great series, but this just looks like Square trying to kind of get a piece of that Monster Hunter pie and. Given that that's the case, no matter how good it is, I just it's not the kind of game I'm that 
interested in to be honest so it's kind of off my radar but it looks nice and it looks like from the trailer that you get to uh, or, uh, a lot of the classic summon uh, aeons or summon monsters from mm -hmm. classic Final Fantasies are going to be in there, like uh, Ifrit and Shiva and Bahamut. And of course, it's not, uh, we saw Cloud Strife from Final Fantasy VII, uh, either playable himself or it's like a Cloud costume or something, I don't know. But mm -hmm. I, either way, Cloud is uh, apparently playable in Final Fantasy Explorers because of course he is, because it's Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> well... I mean, it's interesting, but I think we can both agree, even b bigger than the Shulk news, the biggest news of this Direct is, of course, the brand new D uh, 3DS. Um, yeah. This thing is a massive upgrade, like almost unbelievably so, because not only is it coming in like the standard 3DS, the, the normal 3DS size as well as the XL size, but uh, it adds a lot of the features that people wanted because we always had that Circle Pad Pro that added on a second analog stick. This one finally integrates a second analog stick, well, kind of, and I say analog stick in the loosest sense. It is just a tiny little thing that you can use to control the camera, apparently. That's all I've shown it do, do so far. Or in Smash Brothers, it'll be able to use as the uh, C-stick, you know, quick smash thing. Yeah. So the, it has the, adds that. Uh, it adds a ZR and ZL button, so you got two shoulder buttons now. Right. And it also improves the 3DS's uh, 3D, so you can sort of view it from the side. You don't have to be exactly on anymore, which is yeah. amazingly useful. That, that's honestly, that's the part that's got me most interesting, because I'm a big fan of the 3DS's 3D. I know a lot of people aren't, but I, I use it all the time, and I cannot wait to see how that works. I mean, I... I as I know how narrow the 3DS's viewing angle, uh, viewing range can be, mm -hmm. and I, I just I'm trying to kind of conceptualize in my head what it's going to look like to to be able to view the 3DS from the side and still get that 3D effect. I mean that that to me is actually the megaton of this whole new 3DS thing. For yeah, me. if Nintendo can pull this off, it won't probably won't be too long until TVs are able to implement this kind of technology. If, yeah, so each person can do that. It's it's really impressive tech right now for 3d but even beyond that we got support for micro sd cards both systems are slightly larger now so you got a better thing it seems like uh the display has been improved slightly as well uh for the 3ds and we got cosmetic changes where there's going to be an update later on allowing people to customize their uh user interface for the you know main menu screen for the 3ds with mario either classic mario or zelda themed uh pieces or you know of course other series as well down the line yeah. and not only that we got custom plates that you can use the that you can put on your um, on your uh, on the outside of yours so you even if you have like a red color you can put like a mario faceplate on and show your love of those games it's all really interesting to me yeah no it's i mean it really it it, it really all just came out of nowhere i mean it really seems like nintendo's very uh, voraciously trying to kind of uh, attack that mobile market a little and, and make the, you know, the, the 3DS kind of an all-purpose mobile gaming system uh, and, and just kind of appeal to as, as wide an audience as possible. I mean, the, the fact that you have that customization element now that you can switch out faceplates for both the bottom and the top of your 3DS. I mean, that's, that's great. I mean, that's going to appeal to so many people. And, uh, you know, guess how many people customize their cell phones, you know? Oh, yeah. And, and uh, you know, people love customizing their wallpapers on their tablets and their cell phones. Now you can do that to a degree in the 3DS. And, and I believe that, actually, the, the whole theme shop, that's coming with a, an update, a software update in October, I believe is what I read. Mm -hmm. So that's not too far off, actually. And, uh, yeah, so, I mean, it really does seem like, uh, you know, we got the second analog nub. Like, it just seems like Nintendo's really trying to position the 3DS as both the only gaming, uh, the only portable gaming system you need, either as a casual or hardcore player. Yeah, and I think that's I think that's the key there is that they're they're uh, trying to get back to the core gamers as they as are saying. We just had that interview in I believe Edge with uh, Miyamoto, and he was talking about how Nintendo really does want to get back to the core market. And I think this is evidence of that. This is a lot of features that the core market wanted. It's being expanded. There's also just features there for the casuals, for a more casual player that they can enjoy. Because people, you know, anybody can get into like customizing your UI or their 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 faceplates or whatever. People are willing to spend money on that stuff, and it seems reasonably priced. I mean, they showed it off being, um, I think, one thousand yen, which is about ten bucks or so. Which that's not too bad. And the, the, the other thing is just. They're really trying to update this the, the the interface itself because I think it said it has a bit more CPU power in order to allow for do downloads to be that much faster. And they showed a comparison, and it is night and day. It is it is incredibly quick to download game to get download games now, 
which is interesting to me. It, look, it looks like Nintendo is using this to directly to address all of the problems that the previous 3DS systems had. Now, the question I have is whether or not this will affect old uh, affect the 3DS. So let's say, of course, you have um, they they showed, of course, that the new Monster Hunter 4G will support the analog, the second analog stick, or the the, the little stick. They're calling officially calling it the C stick. So. GameCube reference, there you go. Right. <laughs> and they showed that you can control the camera with it. Now, will players be limited to, you know, players without that little analog stick or even just the analog a Circle Pad Pro be limited? Is there, will they have options for players like that? Is that is that something that developers will have to do now is to keep in mind which system they're playing on so they can adjust properly? Well, it just seems to me that, that developers are going to have to assign, you know, convenient but non-essential functions to this C-Stick. So, for example, camera control. It's convenient, but is it necessary? Not nece No, it's not. But it's super convenient. So I think it's just something where it's going to be, you know, maybe more more fun to play or more convenient to play if you have one of the new 3DSs, but if you don't, it's not like it's unplayable. And I think that's just something that developers are going to have to really focus on to make sure that the game doesn't feel too ghent. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're if you're not playing it on a, on a new 3ds, yeah, I, I think that's going to be the case as well. And another feature, and that really shows going to be really shows their dedication to NFC, is that this is going to have integrated NFC technology right out of the gate. You just place it right on the the bottom touchpad, and uh, you're good to go. Uh, you don't have to yeah. get the extension, which is really interesting. I mean, it, it shows how dedicated they are to these amiibos. Yeah, I mean, uh, so yeah, you, you are going to have to buy a separate adapter for, for Amiibo use. Uh, it sounds like if you want to use it with the original 3DS or the 3DS XL, which I don't know if that's going to come with Amiibos. Probably not, because that, that there would be enough people who have the new 3DS that you don't need that. So mm -hmm. it's going to be interesting how much of a price gouge that is where you have to buy the adapter for you know the old 3DS as well. So. It, 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 but I agree with you that it seems like they're really, really uh, embracing this whole hot with the whole NFC Amiibo thing. And actually, speaking of that, we got, along with all this, we got our announcement of the first 12, the first, I guess, the first wave of, of Amiibo that are coming this holiday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were able to get a press release uh, soon after this, uh, after the Direct that announced, of course, the first 12, um, which, you know, basically the ones you've seen so far are the ones that are being, rele uh, being released. Yeah. Let's see, Mario, Donkey Kong, Peach, Yoshi, Link, Samus, Animal Crossing Villager, Kirby, Fox, Pikachu, Marth, and Wii Fit Trainer. So we've seen the Kid, Kid Icarus figure, but he's not part of this first lineup, yeah. which, which is interesting and fine, because these are the games I think that people are, you know, might have amiibo functionality uh, to them. Now, the interesting thing is that this press release also gives us the suggested retail plot price, which is twelve ninety nine, which yes. is about what you'd expect compared to other uh, NFC figures, I think. That's exactly what I expected. I mean, would it, would it have been nicer than coming at nine ninety nine? Sure, but you know, I, I don't think there's ever any realistic chance of that happening. And you know, it's better than the fourteen ninety nine that some people were expecting. So mm -hmm. you know, it's not the best price you could have hoped for, but it's certainly not the worst either. No, not at all. And you know, um, I, I really, I, I have a feeling these are going to blow up pretty well. I mean, Nintendo's are really embracing them. These are look like high quality fig figures. And I can see people just really attaching themselves to it. Yeah, no, me too. And I have to say, just as kind of an overall theme, I mean, this along with the uh, Mario Kart 8 DLC announcement we just got a couple of days ago, it really does seem we're seeing a new a new Nintendo, a new face of Nintendo that really is unafraid to embrace a lot of the uh, modern aspects of gaming that, that a lot of their fans have been wanting to them to embrace for a long time now. Oh, yeah. And, I, you know, I'm all for it. This is some really great stuff, some really exciting stuff. And... Yeah. It's the funny thing is it's all coming so soon and it had to because of the whole amiibo functionality because I believe they announced the release date at least in Japan for this new 3DS is uh, October sometime correct October 14th which is really soon and uh, what's interesting is that none of the, the press releases we just got after all this m mentioned this new 3DS at all so you know maybe we're not getting it until next year which seems like it would be silly I mean it seems like it you would, would think be a huge you wanted for the holiday seller. yeah. Yeah, so I don't know. I mean, maybe maybe that's an announcement that's coming at a, at a later date, uh, closer to the holidays. I don't know. I mean, it's uh, it's it's very peculiar that we're not getting this 3DS uh, yet here mm -hmm. or in in Europe yet. It's just it's it's a strange decision, and I'm, I'm not quite sure what's going on with that. Yeah, maybe they're just I maybe they're just working on it or anything like that. If they don't get it out before holiday, I'll be very surprised. 
Yeah, me too. Um, but, I mean, they're going to have to announce it fairly soon if they are, mm -hmm. because we're already at the end of August. So they don't have that long to build up hype for it if they are going to release the new 3DS this holiday outside of Japan. Yeah. Uh, I guess the last thing to note about the uh, the new 3DS is the fact that we they did announce a pricing for it, which the um, regular 3DS will be about 16,000 yen, or about 160 bucks, while the uh, 3DS XL it will be 18,800 yen, or you know around 188 bucks. So if I had to uh, you know think and adjust a little bit, I'm gonna say that these are gonna be just come in at the same prices that the old 3DS and XL are at right now, which would make sense. And it really does seem like this is the type of thing they're gonna do to try to just phase out the old ones and really stop production on those and just focus on the new ones. Yeah, I mean, I could definitely see, you know, refurbished uh, 3DS XLs and OG 3DS is still being offered, but it does seem like they're, I mean, it, it, they've all but phased out the original 3DS at this point anyway, so I wouldn't be surprised to see them f start phasing out the 3DS XL when they finally do introduce these to markets outside of Japan. Yeah, it would make sense, and I guess the big question is, are you going to upgrade? Oh, without a doubt, I mean, <laughs> for, and I'm not even a C-sticker, but... Uh, for, for Smash, but you know what, I, I love having new Nintendo hardware, uh, you know, even if they do update their hardware, maybe a little too often, there there's just too, there are too many upgrades with this to, to ignore, and especially for me as a, th uh, a fan of the, of the stereoscopic 3D, I can't overlook the fact that it's been enhanced, the screens have been enhanced, I just love that, so, mm -hmm. and I love, the, I love the metallic blue um, XL, and uh, the, you know, new XL, so, yeah, I mean, one way or another, I'm going to upgrade. Uh, what about you? I'm definitely considering it. Uh, it's always so tough because you, you, uh, like you get this, you have your system, and you're like, do I should I upgrade? Is it worth it to upgrade? You know, for example, I had the original Game Boy Advance, the wide one, and I never upgraded to the SP, which had better battery, uh, better battery life, and the better uh, light, you know, the backlight mm -hmm. screen, which was really nice back in the day. And this is a much more advanced in that sort of upgrade than, you know, this. This is directly addressing a lot of the problems. I can almost compare it to the redesign that the from the original DS to the DS Lite. Uh, it, that's, you know, it's, it's just sort of fixes a lot of the problems that the, the original had. Not that the 3DS was a bad system at all, but this is just better, really. It's yeah. just, it's both hardware-wise and features-wise, it's just better. So I think I am inkling right now to get it. Depends on my financial situation, of course. Of course, yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, it's I if they bundle if if they come out with a nice bundle, I'll definitely get it as by itself, uh, not right away, but eventually, I think. Right, right. Well, there there is one thing that we didn't mention oh, that, that? Uh, that is definitely coming to the U.S. and Europe, which is this uh, Smash Brothers soundtrack selection. Oh, that yes. uh, is is worth mentioning because uh, it's got music from both uh, the Wii U and 3DS versions of the game. And apparently it's, it's coming to the U.S. and Europe as a Club Nintendo reward that you get for registering a copy of both the Wii U and 3DS game. Perfect. So uh, that's we're well, getting I'm it. Sold. That's <laughs> all I need to know. I mean, I'm buying both anyway, and I get a cool soundtrack on top of it. So yeah, I'll take that's that. That's pretty much everything I need to know. Exactly. That's all that matters. So yeah, like I said, just a really nice lineup. This is like, this is some really good stuff. This is E3 quality stuff. I'd, I'd it really is. Say. This felt like a, like a mini E3 direct almost. One last thing that is worth mentioning is that uh, for those who have been following all the Smash Brothers leaks and whatnot, I do see and still see some people saying, you know, maybe it's not real. The leak was not legit. And guys, if you go to the Smash Brothers website and you look at Shulk's render, it's 100% the same. He as uses the, the same. Leak. He uses the same move. That whole <laughs> down spin thing. That's the exact same. So. Well, not even just that, but his 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 portrait, like his render, is, mm -hmm. is, is, is it's the same face as as the leaked character selection screen. So, at this point, you know, take take everything you saw on the leaks is is pretty is pretty legitimate. It, 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 it's pretty much. It's definitely feeling that way. So. Yeah. Unfor both unfortunately and fortunately, but we still don't know the final lineup as we've said before. So exactly, there's a lot to know here, and as you said, there's only what ten more pictures to be updated. So yeah, before the Japanese 3DS version of Smash comes out, so we got ten more pics of the day. Who knows? And uh, you know, the last remaining piece of the puzzle, the Gamatsu puzzle, is the chorus kits, mm -hmm. and you know, maybe they were they maybe they were worked on during development and then abandoned, like maybe Chrom or maybe not. Maybe they're still going to be in. So. Yep, hard to say, but uh, yep. definitely be interesting. You'll get to play Smash later today since you're at PAX, so hope you have yeah. fun there. <laughs> yeah, Andre and I are going to a closed media event. I think Tom is going from 2 to 4, and I'm going to, from 4 to 6. And I guess because it's behind closed doors, the, the rumor is that they're, they're showing off a new playable build. I don't know if it's going to be the final build or what. 
I, but it's, it's, it's not going to gonna be the E3 build. Apparently, it's going to be newer than that. So I'm very curious if they're actually going to show off the new the new 3DS there as well. I know. Now I'm thinking that too. If they're if they're showing that off behind closed doors, which mm-hmm. would be awesome. I would love to see that. So, so yeah, that's your mission. That's you guys' mission today. Get us <laughs> get us as much footage as we can because I'm I'm very interested about that. Well, personally, my mission is to assassinate Tom before two o'clock so I can take <laughs> his two hour slot as well. <laughs> uh, I, I won't say a word. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. All right, guys. Well, I think that about covers it for our discussion of the Nintendo Direct. So thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, be sure to like us on Facebook and Twitter at Game Explain. And of course, stay tuned to Game Explain for more on Nintendo and other things gaming too. Until next time, guys. Bye.